think a lot about this. Like what, what, what it, as a provider, what is helpful for a parent in a hospital setting because you have like information to give us, but also like you can't just give it to us because sometimes it doesn't go that well. Um, for me anyway, I can just speak to myself. Like I think as I got to know people over time, I was more easily able to hear what they had to say, which is like a time factor, sure. Like, you know, like we've had this doctor for two weeks now and like whatever. Um, but part of it is too, I feel like people took the time to learn about us. Um, and I think what was interesting is like some of the, not all of them, but like some of the maybe um, newer people to medicine that we experienced um, were like, really eager beavers, you know, just like want to come in and be like, did you know about myocarditis? And they like tell you all this information. And I'm like, this kid's been screaming for like 12 hours because they're weaning off morphine. Like I'm exhausted. Did you know, like, and now I just learned that she was like dying. Like, I don't like, it's just like the, the timing doesn't match up. Um, or we had like this um, one woman who I love now. We were like, she's so smart and I, she's been so helpful, but she was one of the developmental psychologists who would come and she just always came at the wrong time and would try to start asking questions about like attachment or like other things. And I'm like, can you just come back some other time? Like I finally had to be like, I really want to speak with you, but like, just like, if you look around, like now's not the right time, but like also to say that in a polite way in the moment, in those moments is, is difficult. Um, so I think when people sort of rush in and just start talking, it doesn't, for me anyway, it didn't go very well. Um, and I also didn't love when people come in and be like, well, how are you? It's like, well, how do you think I am? <laughs> like, great, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for asking. Like, I don't know. I just like, just things like that that are like common pleasantries, but that like really don't fit into the scene that you're in, I think could be like skipped, you know? Or like could be modified to just be like, um, you know, how's today compared to yesterday or something? Well, the times that went well for me, when people who I especially didn't know would come in and they would like talk to Henley or like play with her or like comment about something about her or be like, wow, like I know she isn't this, like she's not eating, but like she looks really good or like, oh, like I love her outfit today or like whatever, you know, just like something about her um, or just like noticing her or like engaging with her. Like I then would be like, okay, so you may, you may speak now. <laughs> like, I don't know, it just became easier for me to listen to them because I felt like they weren't like rushing in and like announcing something and leaving. Um, and usually whatever they're saying is like kind of important and like life relevant. So, you know, you kind of like need to hear it. So that always went better. Um, I think like, uh, I think skipping the whole like, wow, you look so tired. Are you getting any sleep? Like, are you eating anything real? It's like, obviously I'm not. So like, I don't, you know, don't make me tell you how terrible I feel. like just be like, did you know they're having free coffee in the like the wherever or like, um, you know, Chipotle is having like two for one burritos. I don't know, like something that speaks to what you're concerned about, but like, maybe don't ask me. It's like, you know, it's like when your coworker comes in, they're like, well, you look really tired today. It's like, thank you so much. <laughs> like, why is that useful? You know, um, cause I know they're trying to be empathetic, but like, I don't need to, because if you think about how many people I spoke to like professional medical professionals in one day, it was probably depending on the day is like, because also a lot of them come with like six people at a time. So like like 20 people and they're all asked telling you like look bad or have you been eating? It's like really annoying. Like, no, I haven't been eating. I've been sitting in this room. That's it. Like, um, so I feel like that can be helpful sometimes to just like not don't like, like address your concerns or like whatever in a different way. Or like one time when the nurse manager came and he's like, do you know that like if you're a parent at the children's, you can actually get a free gym membership across the street at like whatever the place was called. Um, just like show them your ID and like they'll give you one. And that was his way of being like, if you're up for exercise, which you should be because you need to like leave the space, like, look, you can go right there and it's free, you know, as opposed to being well, saying it in a different way. Um, so that was helpful. Dr. Vanderplum is the woman who's in charge of the VAD program. She came in and like, you know, I'm like two weeks postpartum, like hot mess for all the reasons. And she comes in with her nurse, uh, Beth, who, you know, they're both like wonderful people I know very well now, but you know, it's like summertime and they're both wearing like cute summer dresses. And they look like they've been at the beach, and like whatever. And I, I was just like, I can't, I can't right now. Like I just like more people know, but also like, 
I'm so like jealous that like I am not that person right now because like I had all these summer plans, whatever. So Christina says to me, like, and so in my mind, I'm like, I hate these people. <laughs> like, I, I don't hate them, but like, get out. Like, I'm not, I'm not interested. Like, I don't want to talk to one person. Like, I don't care what it is. Just put it in her. Like, I'll learn about it later, whatever. Um, and she was like, you know, she's that down. She's like, you know, I'm a mom first and a doctor second. So I have, here are my kids. Here are so old they are. One of them is only like a year older than Henley. Um, so like, I don't understand what it's like to be you, but I understand what it's like to have kids who might not be well on a very small scale. And so like, I want you to understand that, like, I'm not coming from this as a place as a, like a doctor, 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 like I'm a parent. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. <laughs> like you may continue. Um, and so for me, it was like nice too. It's just like, you're like, you guys are people who understand things that you know, of course they do, because a lot of them have kids, but like, just to say it out loud and to be like, you know, I, I see you like a little bit. I feel like that was really helpful, especially in like moments of like crisis. And for us though, but like over time we got to know people, it was more like, I feel like, you know, Betsy can walk in right now and be like announcement and leave. And like, that would be fine because like, we know her and like, that's what it is. Um, but I think in the beginning, especially when you know, your infant is dying, um, you know, it's like, it's, it's, and, and I think also like, we're a particular kind of parent, like I'm sure other people might handle things differently, right? And they might be like crying more often or they might be angry more often, like they could also not be listening or like dissociating more often. So I think it just sort of, you have to like start to learn the person or like if there's a nurse that's been with them for three days, like maybe ask them about it because, like those nurses, man, they know everything. They know everything and every detail.